<laughs> I can't even think straight. By mid November. It was dry this morning, managed to get a little bit done before the rain came, came about 11 o'clock, got a few bits done in the pouring rain and now I can't dig any more holes so it's going to have to be another day now, not to worry. And so rain has stopped play again. We'll go home and do a bit of editing, I guess. Hey, hope. I'm feeling a bit sorry for myself today. I've got the bubonic plague here. I've no idea what's going on. But yesterday I came home from Sheffield and that was rough as anything. So the shivers and the headaches and snot and the sore throat and backache and oh yeah just all your muscles ache so that was yesterday so today i'm convalescing next to the log burner trying to do a little bit of editing but don't really feel like it but today's actually wednesday and i just thought i'd check in with you and say the one word wednesday for today is for me fragile which yeah i'm sure you'll understand so there's no actual woodland work going on today but hopefully I feel a little bit better tomorrow and we'll try and get crack on and get some work done. Bye for now. <laughs> Well, this week, what a complete and utter, complete and utter disaster. Let's have a minute together. So Monday, I was meant to be fitting. So I did a bit of fitting over at Artsorn and panels and that was all going tickety-boo until it started to rain again. Tuesday, I was over in Sheffield, which is about 
50 miles north of here picking up some stuff for my brother because he hires me for the trailer that all went fine I looked at a job Tuesday afternoon felt a bit rough I thought hmm don't feel very well here so Tuesday night I felt rough as anything proper flued up Wednesday I was meant to be going out and doing a gardening job I felt so rough I thought I'm going to have to just cancel so I cancelled Wednesday and it absolutely lashed it down with rain again we've had so much rain again this week yesterday was Thursday I thought oh, I still don't feel very well I've still got the shivers and the aches and pains and I'll be alright I'll, I'll uh, take a Covid test just to make sure like and it turns out we're all Covid positive again which doesn't make a great deal of difference to anybody it seems anymore but I still feel like isolation is the key and that to protect friends and family and all that sort of stuff so we're hibernating for a while yet <coughs> today's Friday it's a stunning day outside you can probably see the sun glinting through the windows here it's a really nice day outside there it's a shame because it would have been a cracking day for fitting fence panels but that's not going to happen today I'm so far behind on my work, it's insane. By mid-November, I was meant to be building two gates, and now it's the end of November. It's December in a few days, and uh, I haven't even got the timber for it yet. But last year, when I had COVID, uh, we all had it again. Karen had it really mild. Ellie Ray had it for a couple of days, and she was over it. I had it about three and a half weeks. I was so ill. I ended up having to claim a grant off the local council because I couldn't earn anything. Um, oh, honestly, I've never been so well in all my life. You know when you, you get flu and you think, oh, a couple of days, I feel a little bit better, sweat it out of me. Honestly, for 10 days solid, I felt worse every single day. And I just thought, you know what, it, it got to the point when both my sisters were like, panicking, thinking I should go to hospital because I was so ill. I was hardly eating anything lost a stone in weight um, it was madness really I recovered from it thankfully and uh, no ill effects I don't think but there was a lot of people who suffered terrible with it thankfully I think my immune system is managing to fight it off better this time right <clears throat> after the little sob story misery one of the first jobs this morning is to put some brackets on the back of these so Karen has been drawing last week on a stack there look and then sadly the second time of the owl has got to be sanded off again so we Karen says I'm not allowed to show you and I think we're going to cut that one in half this time so we can get two pieces of wood and two pictures on it because you said the piece of wood is just too big and then I can't remember if I've showed you this and I've just filled up the pith holes with some ash dowels I drilled the holes out part of the dip some dowels in so they've got to be sanded off as well and then once we've done that I think we're sort I don't know what I'll do then I'll just I might have a bit of a workshop day or I might just go inside and edit some more videos I've been edit, editing some of Ellie Ray's videos because Ellie Ray's got her own little what we call a amateur photography channel honestly she loves it loves the camera does some really nice kind of artistic style shots she really gets quite into that so that was an interesting tip from Jamie, the Worcestershire cabinet maker, was to drop your blade down and cover it with this, the, um, what's this called, fence. And in that way, when somebody turns a machine on by accident, they can't put their hand on the blade and the blade isn't even exposed. Which I just thought for 10 seconds work was a really handy safety tip, so I'm going to keep trying to implement that. So we just, uh, she always wanted her own little YouTube channel, you know what kids are like in YouTube. All these famous people on there so uh, she says can I have a YouTube channel so yes well, I, I just adapted an, another channel of my own into hers called it's Ray I think she's got seven subscribers now Actually, some of the outings that we go on I compile her pictures and a few of mine and we make them into little videos so there's a couple of bike rides I went on in the summer and she went to London in August with us with her cousins I did that one I've got another one to do where we went to Cork, I've been mushroom hunting, I've got that one to do yet, and I think there might be another yet. <sighs> okay, let's do it. Do you know what, this planer is not adjusted properly, I'm going to give it 10 minutes. Digging in this side, so 
when I flip it, it's this side. I took the battery out, by the way. I've sort of put up with it before, but now I'm not. I'm not prepared to put up with it any longer. Now I'm not uh, an expert on these, but I cannot see any particular means of adjustment. I'll tell you what, let's have this one out. Hmm. I don't know whether a bit of debris got underneath or what. But... Hmm. Now this one is definitely sticking out a bit more. So maybe it's this side that's the problem. And that, I believe, is the adjustment. Right, so in which case, we need to set that up then. There's a gap down there, and on this side there isn't. So I'm going to adjust this one so that that gap is the same. Use my spanner as a gauge. I'll go with that. Try that. I think you might have missed that, but the planer did work better. I wouldn't say it was perfect, but what I do to finish off the surface to get a nicer, cleaner finish rather than sanding it all is to use my little block plane style plane. Quite a handy little plane that was Stanley number 130. Handy little bit of a tool that one. I just use that to and then sand it off to finish. Thank you. 